All right, continuation of teaching techniques. We are now on page 79 in your course packet, and it is titled Teach New Behaviors or Increased Behaviors, and it starts with social reinforcement. All right, these are techniques to get someone to do what you need them to do. These are great examples. If you're going to be teaching, you need to be reminded of these quite often. Um, if you're going to be working with coworkers, these are great ways to get people to do what you really is essentially want them to do. Parenting, these work with parenting uh, students when they leave college. Sometimes they say, I never learned anything practical. Here's your practical lesson. These are great tips. Social reinforcement. What this means is that you're going to give a group of people you're going to praise the whole group. But now imagine you've got Joe who's wandering off. If I've got people that are to be singing and Joe gets off and he wanders, now Joe might have some cognitive challenges, maybe he has Alzheimer's, and he just happens to be unaware of what we're trying to do. All a therapist has to do is say, hey, I love how everyone is singing. This sounds great when we're singing. That Joe hears that and it's reminding him, oh, she wants us to be singing. So it's just a great gentle way to let everyone know what their expectations are without having to leave a whole group to be like, Joe, Joe, we're not over here. We're over here. Just praise everyone. For students, I love how all the students are paying attention and they're taking notes on this lecture. It's just a gentle way to remind someone, oh, she wants us to take notes. All right, praise statements. If um, you wanna hear the biggest, the biggest highlight from all this is the praise statement. The praise statement is that the statement that you make right at an individual and it's very specific. Joe, I love your voice. I didn't know you were a baritone. Let me hear that baritone voice. All right, so now Joe knows exactly what I want from him. I want him to use that baritone voice. Um, praise statements, here's my pet peeve, my biggest pet peeve. People, teachers, coworkers, parents will say, hey, great job. That is not a praise statement. It's too vague. Great job what? Great job getting dressed, great job smiling, looking at me. You need to be specific. Um, or someone might say, hey, hey, high five. That's not a praise statement. It's so close to being a praise statement. You should say, hey, high five me for that great piece of art. You're really great at your color choices. Or great job filling in those answers. Um, there's a group project that we have at the end of the semester. And in it, you have to incorporate some of these techniques. And I will have students that will say, great job they catch themselves and then they fill in the specific praise statement great job answering that question great job playing that instrument make it specific did you know co-workers will work harder for praise statements than paychecks why we assume we're going to get a paycheck right you assume if you work you get a paycheck but if you walk into work and your boss says to you hey joe I love how I can rely on you to be the one that gets along with everyone. You always come to the table with the gr most creative, workable plans. What's Joe going to do? Joe's going to make sure he's getting along with everyone, corralling everyone to be on team unity. He's going to make sure he's always prepared for those meetings. He's going to come in with creative ideas. Um, Praise statements, they work. Try them, that's your assignment. Try a praise statement this week. Very specific, right at the individual. Free time is the next one. We all understand free time, it's a reward that you get after. So you have to make sure your client can wait a little bit. For music therapy, we might say, this session plan, we have these goals to work on. When those goals are completed, then we're going to play the piano. Then we're going to listen to your favorite music. Then we're going to teach you how to play bass. So it's earned. You have to wait for it. Token economy. This is one that you're all familiar with. 
someone catches you doing something what they want you to be doing and they reward you with something tangible. Now this reward only works if there's value in it. If you're working with a group of people, it's interesting how you can get value in something that maybe doesn't even have a lot of value, like stickers in schools. Children will work for stickers. Think about it. Stickers don't really have a lot of value, but since the whole group puts value on them, it works. If you're using a token economy with your children, you'll probably need to change the token if it's like a pencil or um, if it's certain cookies or rewards or like that you might need to change it up so that the value stays the same unless you find something that never loses value uh, you in your world today we live by token economy when you go to the gas station and you put in your rewards card you're getting rewarded. That's a token economy. At the grocery store, we all have the little tags. Token economy. The best token economy I've heard of is a school system working with Pizza Hut. So when a student reads, they get um, pizza points. Um, so they're, they're working with the school and they're working with Pizza Hut. Now, some token economies, you can gather up a bunch of rewards to get the grand reward. Token economy works. That means you're rewarding someone for the correct behavior. The next page says level system. Level system's a little bit harder to understand. I've used a level system when I worked at a Department of Correction. Uh, a lot of times these are used at Department of Corrections. This means when you show um, a certain behavior, you're at the, a certain level. Um, a lot of times they have a client come in and everyone starts at the lowest level. So let's say level C. Level C has these rewards. Over time, that's what's great about this system, is it's not just like the token economy is like giving a dog a treat for every good move, okay? Level system means you've got weeks. You can even make mistakes but then you can correct yourself and go and show tons of good behaviors so that when you have your evaluation, they'll say, oh yeah, Joe, he did this, this, this. He's ready for the next level. I think we should put him on level B. Level B then would have grander rewards and opportunities. Hence, level A would have the greatest rewards and opportunities. I've got lots of great stories about this level system, but I'm gonna to try to keep this video short level system. You get special rewards depending on which level you're on. The beauty of it is that there is um, a time frame that allows you to make mistakes but also can correct them. That's my timer. The final one is a behavioral contract and this really is your goal is going to be written out and they sign it. So if you're working with people that are not wanting to be in your session but they need to be, like they're court ordered, then if they come into your session and they're causing trouble, a music therapist just has to remind them of their contract. Hey Joe, here's your contract, here's your goals that you're gonna work on. If you're not here to work on these goals, I need to ask you to leave. Um, I've heard of teachers using behavior contracts. I imagine they've got them nicely, playfully written out um, so that a child is feeling the benefits, the rewards of taking part in that behavioral contract. Um, there you go.